Welcome to the second part of Gerd Hofstede's Cultural Dimensions. Keep in mind to guess the leading countries for each scale that you could be named in the next upcoming video. And now we continue with the fourth dimension. Masculinity and femininity are referred to manlike and womanlike. The question is whether biological differences between the sexes should or shouldn't have implications for their roles in social activities. Since the early 1930s, anthropologists studied gender differentiation in societies, so these terms are borrowed from social anthropology. It is the only score which is depending on gender. Masculinity is defined by Hofstede as that emotional gender are distinct for each society, while men should be assertive, tough and focused on material success, women should focus on their quality of life and nurturing. In femininity the emotional gender roles overlap, men and women are supposed to be modest, tender and both should focus on quality of life. The Masculinity Index Score MAS, is scaled from 0 for low and 100 for high masculinity. The position of a particular nation is represented by its relative position to the other societies. In countries with a low score on masculinity, there is an overall people orientation. You will work to live and try to balance family and your job. The quality of life and the environment are important and competition is ought to be leveled, so you shouldn't try to be better than others. For example, in companies there's a friendly and personal way of negotiations and its atmosphere. There's also more equity orientation with the fulfillment of needs. Examples are Denmark with a score of 16 and Costa Rica with 21. Countries with a high masculinity score have a money and things orientation. So you live to work and your job prevails over your family. Performance and growth are of utmost importance and excelling, trying to be the best, is the name of the game. The atmosphere while negotiating with others is a bit more hostile and formal. There's a general result orientation and performances need to be fulfilled. Country examples are Italy with a score of 70 and Mexico with 69. Low MES scoring countries have a social adaption oriented school system. The liberation movement of women is more moderate and the conservation of the environment is more important than growth. In high scoring countries the school system is performance oriented. The movements to liberate women are more aggressive. The economic growth is seen as more important than the conservation of the environment. The scores are also transferred through generations where mother and father represent role models. At the other scores the MAS is also rooted in history and is ought to be stable over time. There is no data included for masculinity score in Sjord Beugel's D research, so no prediction could be made towards a shift through time. Short-term and long-term orientation were coined by Hofstede as a fifth dimension in 1991. He extracted the dimension from the Chinese value service CVS which had students as its base and consisted of 23 different societies. It was developed by Michael H. Bond and replicated by Michael Minkoff by analyzing the World Value Survey WVS which included 93 societies. Hofstede defined short-term orientation as a fostering of virtues related to the past and the present in a society, such as national pride, respect for tradition, preservation of faith and fulfilling social obligations. In general it has a present and past orientation. Long-term orientation on the other hand is defined as a fostering of pragmatic virtues orientated to future rewards in a society in particular, perseverance, 
thrift and adapting to changing circumstances. It is future orientated. The long term orientation score LTO is positively correlated with economic growth. So you may say that a long term orientation is positive for it. The score of 0 represents a short term and the score of 100 a long term orientation. In countries where short term orientation is dominant, an immediate gratification of need is expected and short term virtues like social consumption are taught. Problem solving is fuzzy and fixed norms apply always whatever circumstances may be. Examples are grasshopper companies which ought to have short term gains, quick results and gratification as their goal. Examples for countries are Nigeria with a score of 13 and Australia with 21. For long term orientated countries a deferred gratification of needs is acceptable and virtues like fragility and perseverance are taught. The problem solving is structured and which norms apply depends on the situation. In terms of the economy, long term plans and sustainability are the main goals which lead to restraint. Countries are China with 87 points and Germany with 83. Countries which score low on LTO are less satisfied with their daily human relations. There is a small savings quote and little money for investment. A low score on LTO leads to a slower economic growth in poorer countries. Long term orientated countries see daily human relations as satisfying. There is a large quote of savings and funds are always available for investments. These factors lead to a faster economic growth in poorer countries. Like for the other scores, values are transferred from parents to children and are already found in 15 year olds. These values acquired in the childhood rarely change in later life. Our global information system does affect our private habits or business practices. They may vary according to pre-existing and stable societal values. The terms indulgence and restraint have been first used by Michael Minkoff to cover societal differences revealed by the World Value Survey WVS, which have been covered by the other five dimensions. They are related to the national levels of subjective happiness and life control. Hofstede defines indulgence as a relatively free gratification of basic and natural human desires leading to enjoying life and having fun allowed by society. Where restraint is defined as suppressing of the gratification of needs and the regulation by means of strict social norms in the society. The Indulgence Worsen Restraints Index IVR, showcases the differences between societies. A score of 0 represents more restraint while 100 stands for more indulgence. Indulgence and restraint don't represent an absolute standard. A society of restraint is less happy and less healthy. Pessimism and cynicism are personal traits. These countries have a work ethic and people don't feel that they have control over their life. For example, on formal occasions you have to treat everyone formal and can't make jokes to break the tension. Examples are Russia with a score of 20 and China with 24. Societies with high indulgence live healthier and happier. They have a leisure ethic and have the perception that they have control over their personal life. At formal occasions you may break the tension with jokes and treat people informal. Good examples are Sweden with 78 points and Nigeria with 84. Countries with a low indulgence see the maintenance of order in the nation as very important. And if the country is furthermore educated, it leads to a lower birth rate. High indulgent countries see freedom of speech as very important. And if the majority of the people is educated, it leads to higher birth rates. Like for the other scores, 
values are transferred from parents to children and rarely change in later life. The position of one country is relative to the other positions of all nations. Now I will present some of the main critique points of this theory. The weakness of his construct is that it is non-theoretical and only empirical. It is not up to date due to the era the data has been collected, 1968 till 1972. The external validity may be weak so you can't compare IBM workers to host societies and there's a lot of correlation in between his scales, IDV, PDI and IDV LTO which may point to a similarity of what these scores may measure. Strength, on the other hand, is his database research, which is pretty big with over 100,000 participants and his relative stability of the collected data. His biggest critic, Professor Brandon McSweeney, says that Hofstede's claims towards the role of national culture may contain too much determinism that could be linked to a fundamental flaw in his methodology. In other words, that his data and interpretation seem as there is no other interpretation possible and that might be due to a big flaw in the construction and conduction of his research. Another critic by the name of Professor Ma Yufang claimed that only 2 to 4% of the variance can be explained by national differences and 96% can't be explained. This simply means that all the differences Hofstede may have found can't be really explained by his data. Dr. Paul Brewer and Professor Sonal Venek incline that the cultural dimensions he found are only significant or statistically relevant on national level and not on an individual level, so there can't be any conclusions about individuals. A positive critique by Shalom Schwarz and Ronald Engelhardt implies that there is consistency of several dimensions of their own world's value survey with the dimensions found by Hofstede. These are all six dimensions assumed by Gerd Hofstede. I hope I could shed a positive light onto them and increase the interest for the other theories. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, write a commentary or subscribe. If you want to participate with your guess of the top six exams for one end of the scale, you can write a comment or send me a channel message. You will be displayed in the next video which will release more or less four weeks after these videos. Otherwise, I wish you a nice day, thanks for watching and until the next time here at iCAT.